This site has a little something for everybody, and we're just minutes from our studio. I'm WEIU's Lacey Spence, and I'll share why you should take a hike to Fox Ridge State Park. Take a hike on WEIU is supported by Roll King, America's farm and home store, camping supplies, kayaks, fishing and pet supplies, and more. Find your store and more information regarding Roll King at RollKing.com. Hi, I'm WEIU's Lacey Spence. I've lived in Central Illinois my whole life, and if there's one thing I've learned, you don't have to go too far to find the beauty of the great outdoors. Come along with me as I visit a variety of parks and natural areas across Illinois, and share why you should take a hike to each episode's location. Adventure and fun await in Take a Hike, the miniseries. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Take a Hike. I'm your host, Lacey Spence. I'm excited to be back for season three, and we are in WEIU's backyard again. We are at Fox Ridge State Park today. You wouldn't know it. This day started out with a little bit of drizzle, but it's cleared out to be a beautiful day. So joining us for this interview is Dwayne Snow. We've got the site superintendent here for Fox Ridge. Welcome to Take a Hike. Thank you. Of course. Now, I like to let our viewers get to know who we're talking to. And so before we started recording, you told me that you have a little bit of history with working for the state and being outdoors. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So I've, I've worked with uh, DNR for almost 30 years. Um, started out at Lincoln Trail State Park. Yeah. Um, I went from there to Stephen A. Forbes, uh, was a site tech there for, for many years, and got promoted to uh, Samdale Lake. Um, down by Fairfield, was an assistant superintendent there, and then I went from there to Goose Lake Prairie, up at Morris, Illinois, and was up there for a few years, and then got a chance to come back, back down here and to beautiful Fox Ridge. Wonderful, so I uh, definitely have a wealth of knowledge about um, natural resources, being outside and things, and so how long have you been at Fox Ridge? I've been here seven years. Seven years. Wonderful. Well, we like to highlight uh, why people should take a hike or make the drive to each location. And so can you start off with maybe what are some um, highlights of recreation opportunities for people? So one of our main uh, recreational opportunities here is the hiking trails. Yeah. Um, these trails were actually put in by the conservation, the Civilian Conservation Corps uh, back in the 30s. Um, so I, I think that's really kind of neat. Um, we have the Amberall River that we like to canoe and kayak on. So sure. we, have, we have two accesses uh, to that. Um, we have the ball diamond that people like to come out and you know play. Uh, we have a youth area, uh, camp, campground, and, but like I say, our trails are quite extensive here and uh, quite, quite hilly, so be prepared. Sure, and so um, we have a trail that we're going to save for a little bit later in the program. But other than that, can you kind of walk us through um, maybe what the trails are called and their you know general uh, length and how hard they are? Okay, so we have Acorn Avenue, which would be our longest trail. It goes from like the campground all the way down to the South Canoe Access. Um, we have a lot of trails that feed into the Acorn Avenue Trail. Um, Eagle's Nest is one of my favorite. Here in a few weeks when the leaves start turning, it'll be really beautiful. Um, we have Trail of Tears um, that I really enjoy in the fall too. It, it leaves from the campground and makes a circle. Uh, in the fall, whenever the leaves are turning, uh, the trail kind of goes right down a ridge. So you, have, you can look in the valleys on both sides and see the, see the beautiful trees. It is quite lovely. And I tell you what, um, folks who maybe aren't as familiar with this part of Illinois, think Illinois is pretty darn flat, but once you start getting into this region, that's when you start to get some of the, the ridges terrain, which is just, like you said, it's really beautiful to look mm -hmm. at. That's, that's part of why Fox Ridge is here, is the, the ridges. Uh, due to the glaciation, um, these ridges were, were formed here, uh, and it's kind of a unique feature for this part of, the, of Illinois. And that's part of why the local community back uh, promoted 
to build a park here was the unique features. Yeah, and since you mentioned that, um, are you able to talk a little bit about the history or at least how Fox Ridge was started? So Fox Ridge was originally planned uh, in cooperation with the Park Service, uh, with the Civilian Conservation Corps. Yeah. Um, that Lincoln Log Cabin over here was where the, the encampment was and the, the men that worked uh, at the camp and built the trails and built the structure that's behind us here. Um, they built several structures here. Um, Back, that was all back and done in the 30s. I think the park was dedicated in 1938. So it's one of the older parks in the state of Illinois. Wonderful. I know that I have fond memories of both going to Lincoln Log as a child and then also coming out here. Um, my old school district, they would come out here for like a year end picnic. And so it was just always a beautiful venue and backdrop for that. So earlier you were talking about uh, there's a ball field. Mm -hmm. Is there just one or is there multiple? There, or? There's two. There's two of them. What, what kind of sports are we talking? Uh, so baseball. Okay. Uh, and, and one of them is named after one of the old superintendents here is Kyle Field. Yeah. Um, I understand that uh, he was here many years, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know a lot about that history. Sure, but the other field is also baseball? or G Yes, okay. uh, and it's just ball diamond. And then there is um, a playground behind us. Is this the only one or is there others? Uh, no, or? we have three of what I would call the, the more modern, like we have behind it, and then we have three of the older structures that would have been put in probably 40 years ago. Um, swings and that, that sort of stuff, but you can tell the difference in them. So other than uh, the hiking opportunities, you also mentioned camping. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about camping. What kind of sites do you have around here? So we have Class A sites. Uh, we have 43 Class A sites. That's a site with electricity. We have a shower building. Uh, we have two cabins that you can rent. They're rustic cabins, so you have to bring your own gear, bedding uh, whenever you come. Uh, but those are quite popular. Um, they have lights and electricity, but um, there's no plumbing or anything. That's the, the rustic part of them. And then we have one tent only site. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, if I'm somebody who is wanting to uh, snag a spot, do I contact the park office? Is it something I do online? How do so I So you about would that? do that online at camp.exploremoreil.com is how you'd make your reservation. Wonderful. So we, we assist if, if you're having difficulty, you can call the park and, and get some guidance um, and some of the older folks that have um, technologically challenged will make a reservation for them if necessary but we try for most everybody to do it online well anymore i feel like i'm finding i have <laughs> you know tech issues just as much as the next person uh so those spots do they typically go fast for a season is there like a window of when i can camp here and when i can't so camping uh, the holiday weekends you can make reservations six months in advance okay. and those will be filled up a lot of times within four to five months of the holiday um, they'll be booked up um, so don't delay don't delay <laughs> uh, but you can uh, once in a while there will be a cancellation and somebody will snag a reservation just a week or two ahead of time somebody will cancel so you never know and then we do have 12 sites that are first come first serve so those sites are quite popular for the folks that don't like to make a reservation Simple enough. So other than uh, camping, you had also mentioned being along the Embraer River and having the kayaking opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? Do I bring my own? Is there any place to rent them? So there's not any local place to rent them. Okay. IDNR doesn't, um, doesn't rent them, uh, so you have to bring your own, but it's quite popular. Uh, I usually take my granddaughters every summer and, and we really enjoy you know the, the two access points that we have here and it's one of the highlights of my granddaughter's summer. <laughs> I was gonna say, I bet they have a fabulous time with Grandpa Dwayne. Yes. Uh, those two access sites, where are they located within the park? So we have North Canoe Access, which in the fork in the road, it'll say, and it's at the very end of the road. It's the far north end of the park. And then we have one at the south, so it's just continue on down uh, to the south end of the park, and there's, there's another one down there. Wonderful. Now, sometimes um, people need to get like, a tag or a sticker before they can do that? Is that the case here? No, nothing okay. is required. Wonderful. So we'll scooch on to um, other activities maybe. If you're along the river, is there fishing? There is fishing. Okay. Uh, it's, um, I'm not gonna say that it's, you know, top knot fishing like some of your more sport fishing lakes. It has a lot of rough fish in it. Um, so, but it is quite popular with fishing, yes. 
And for that, I assume just the regular type of fishing license and... Yes. Okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing special from, for, from the park. Awesome. And I'm sorry if it's a silly question. Um, am I able to bring any bigger of a boat than a kayak or anything out? Uh, no, there's not any access to the rivers for motorboats. Okay. So it's just for kayaks and canoes. Good to know. I'd hate to haul it all the way yes. here and be, you know, out of luck, up a creek, if you will. <laughs> So uh, we started the day off in the visitor center and there was quite a slew of specimens inside. Can you tell the folks at home a little bit about what they can see if they want to pop by the visitor center? So inside the visitor center we have a lot of uh, animals that have been donated. Um, they're all native to the area. Um, there's bobcat in there and I've, I have seen bobcat in the park. There's river otter that you can see in the park. Uh, there's deer. Uh, there's several owls. We have a, a nesting bart owls that uh, is right by the, the front office. You can hear them about every evening. Um, my residence is inside the park, and uh, most evenings I would see those bart owls, uh, the pair of them, land in the trees in my yard and, and get to watch them, and it's, it was quite, quite neat. Yeah. Now, by chance, last season we went and spoke with Warbler Ridge Conservation Area, and they were talking about um, how they are increasing their bat habitat, and they've got bat houses out there. Did any of them ever scoot over here? Oh, ever yes. Ever any bats? Yes. Uh, we have some endangered Indiana brown bats here on the yeah. park. Um, I have a heritage biologist that knows the location of those den trees. Um, and I, I told her that I preferred her not to share that that way. <laughs> Because it's not something that you want everybody to know where an endangered species is. Sure. Um, but we, we do have quite a few bats here in the park and see them quite often. Uh, actually see them here at the uh, Brick Pavilion. Well, and in my opinion, you really want them around because they're good mosquito eaters. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they, they, for some reason, think I'm especially delicious and I can't ever seem to get out of any <laughs> of these shoots without getting eaten alive. Um, and so as we're talking about wildlife, um, I do have to ask, are there ever any hunting opportunities in the park, whether that is recreational or just management of certain species? So, so, uh, so it is a recreational opportunity, but it is also uh, a management tool that we use here. Okay. Uh, you're allowed to archery deer hunt here on the park. About half of the acreage is open to hunting. Uh, we do have a shotgun season here. Uh, we do wild turkey hunting here, uh, and we also, um, you can do f fur bears, uh, raccoon, and possum. Um, actually, the whole park is open to raccoon hunting. Um, we opened that up a few years ago just due to the population of the coons. Um, I, I like to tell people that they're our biggest litter bug, and uh, so we, we are trying to manage the coon population just sure. to keep them out of the trash and uh, and they they can be um they're a wild animal and but they don't appear like it so the number one animal to uh, cause people to seek medical attention is raccoons oh goodness and Just, they carry a bunch a bunch of diseases yes so uh they're cute and they're cuddly but uh but they do bite and scratch Mm -hmm. So definitely keep your distance. <laughs> if I am somebody who is looking to hunt, is there any special arrangements I need to make within the park or someone to contact? So in order to hunt on the park, you have to have a windshield card. Okay. Uh, it's managed you know, through Springfield. Um, there's, there's a website, just go on the hunting link and select what you want to hunt uh, and the park you want to hunt and print off your windshield card. Um, we don't limit the amount of archery hunters or coon hunters or anything. Uh, we don't have enough pressure that we have to do that at this time. You know, could change in the future. Sure. Sure. And so if I was looking for updated info, can I just give you all a call? You, you can call, yes. Okay. We can give you a brief overview. Now, we can't do the windshield card. You sure, have sure. To Okay, so as we are um, heading toward the end of this portion of the interview, is there anything I haven't asked you about that maybe um, is definitely worth sharing with viewers, why they should come check out Fox Ridge? Um, so I, I mean, I, I definitely think people should come to Fox Ridge to enjoy the trails, to enjoy our shelters, uh, the, the history. Um, I, I'm very proud of the fact that, like to say, the structure behind us was actually um, the Civilian Conservation Corps built it with oversight from the National Park Service. And my grandfather actually worked for the CCC camps, not, not here at Fox Ridge. 
um, but it kind of gives me a sense of connection to you know the men that built this structure. So I, I think that is really incredible. No, and we love when we when we have a family tie to something, then you know you appreciate it a little more. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of the structure behind us, there are other pavilions around in the park. Um, how do I go about if I would like to, do I have to reserve those? Or? So most of our uh, shelters are reservable. You would go on the same website that you need a camping reservation for, okay. camp.exploremoreio, and um, make your reservations. It's $50 fee, um, but it's the same process, same website. Um, so yes, and if, you, if you're having difficulty with the system, uh, call and I'll help you out. And you all have things out, events out here. I mean, from birthdays, family reunions to weddings. Oh yes, this our brick pavilion is very popular with weddings. Um, yeah, we we had an event here just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the labor council was here with about 400 people. Um, quite a large event, and then we have another local event. Uh, Casey Summers has a has an event here every year, and it it brings in roughly a thousand people. Wow. So it's it's a it's a huge event for the park. Anything for people to get involved in, or um, maybe youth, or? So we, we do have a youth area and we do have a foundation. Uh, I know my Fox Ridge Foundation, they're, they're on Facebook, you can find them. Uh, they're always, uh, you know, appreciate donations. Uh, and they also would appreciate uh, more members. Um, it's a very active group. Um, I do have to give them credit for our youth area. If it hadn't have been for our foundation, you know, and, and wanting to see our youth area opened up and was willing to put in the money to, to get that uh, structure up and running, uh, our youth area would still be closed. So I, wow. I'm very appreciative of that. And that's the kind of things that they do for fundraisers um, just for the park, just to see things took care of. Uh, we have a lot of Eagle projects that are taking place here, and I know they've helped fund some of those. So. The kids area, I'm so sorry if I'm misunderstanding, is that one of the playgrounds or is that something different? That is the, so the youth area is something different. Let's talk about that. Okay, so it's a, a group camp area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 28 by 50 pole barn structure. Uh, it's lit, um, has electrical outlets, and it's an area for uh, youth groups to come and camp and uh, utilize the, the structure if they're here. Yeah. So. Um, since you brought up the foundation, are there other ways for people to give back? Are there any cleanup days or anything that take place annually? Or? So annually we will do Earth Day events with, yeah. with the local school kids. Um, and the foundation has helped with that. Um, the Cabot Corporation has donated money towards plants for that in the past. Um, but that's something that we annually do too. And if I'm looking to get involved with the foundation, is the best way to do so just social media? Or is there someone I can... Uh, so social media would probably be the easiest route and then they have meetings quarterly uh, and they're always looking for new members. Wonderful. So we've covered from camping to trails, kind of everything in between. And so now we're going to take a quick break and we are going to talk about an upcoming trail. So as we're taping this, uh, we are taping in September of 2023. This will air in 2024. So hopefully we'll have uh, some new developments. So don't go anywhere. Take a hike. We'll be right back. And we are back and the venue is a little bit shadier over here, which I appreciate. So Dwayne, can you tell us where we are at now in Fox Ridge State Park? 
So right now we're in the middle of the Ambrow River Land and Water Reserve. Okay. Uh, it's a special designation to kind of protect this land from any further development. And we are right now standing in the middle of a new project that we're doing here. We're, we're trying to revive an old roadway that was in the Land and Water Reserve and convert it into a hiking and biking trail. Wonderful. Um, so we're, the contractors are working as we speak. Wonderful. So we told the folks at home we we're taping in uh, September. So hopefully when they're checking this episode out in uh, early 2024, everything should be all squared away with this space. Let's take a little little walk, if you will. Uh, so this area, you were telling us there are several hundred acres that are being preserved. Yes, like 980 acres here in the Land and Water Reserve. That's fantastic. Now this is on the back side of the park. We had to take kind of a, mm -hmm. a little, you know, loop-de-loop, -loop, loving drive back here. We passed some other things too. Um, we've got Ridge Lake, which I don't think we talked a whole lot about in the first, first half of things. So fill us in, what is Ridge Lake? So Ridge Lake was built in the 40s. Uh, it's a research lake. Uh, the Illinois Natural History Survey manages it. Uh, it's kind of a lease with IDNR. Um, and Ridge Lake is actually the longest running research, uh, has the longest running research in the U.S. So it's kind of, that's its claim to fame. And it's right in our own backyard. Yes. Which is super neat. Um, and then one other thing that we had passed on our drive back here, uh, we saw a sign for horse trail. So for part of the park, you can have horses out here. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 3.7 miles of horse trails. Um, no, we have no equestrian camping. It's, it's just open to horseback riding. But yes, um, so you're welcome to come out and ride your horse. And I assume all the trails are pretty clearly marked as to whether it's foot traffic and Correct. those type of things. Uh, our, our equestrian trail is totally separate. It's, it's uh, not for hiking or biking as this trail, and this trail will not be open to the equestrian. It'll just be open for bike and hiking. And if folks are curious, uh, why might this trail not be considered like a true biking trail? Um, so a true biking trail uh, can only have so much grade. Uh, and if the slope's off enough, it would have to have guardrails. And we are absent those kind of things. There wasn't money in the project for those kind of things. So it's a hiking first with bikes allowed. Well, sure, and of course, coming out here, safety is paramount. Uh, and that's part of why we wanted to kind of revive this is just to access, because this was a pretty remote area yeah. uh, before. And if, if there's an injury, uh, it's nice to be able to get access, you know, if there's an injured hunter or whatever. So it's kind of an access as well. And of course, you know, laying the safety ground rules, just making sure that you are always letting people know when you're heading out, when you're expected to be back, what area you'll be. So then if that cell phone doesn't work or anything, they know where to find you or at least know where to look. Yes. And so before we wrap up and let you go, uh, you told me that you have a forestry degree mm -hmm. and we don't want to let that go to waste <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of beautiful foliage well, out here. Test me here. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of beautiful foliage for people to check out, um, as, you know, spring, summer or fall. And I have to ask, you know, what kind of trees can people see if they're coming out to Fox Ridge? So we have the typical oak hickory forest here. Um, there's a lot of maple in our understory, um, but uh, we have sweet gum. Uh, it's, it's a very beautiful mix. Unfortunately, uh, due to the emerald ash borer, we're losing uh, a lot of our ash trees. I don't know if you noticed when you drove through the park, but there's a lot of dead trees and it's due to the emerald ash borer that was uh, brought in. Gotcha. And so with that, will you all continue to come in and chop those down or? Uh, so we, we do allow people to come in and collect firewood, uh, okay. but we don't allow them to cut, uh, cut trees down. Uh, we have a stockpile where we cut the trees down and stockpile them and then they can get a permit and cut firewood. Now, I know you're telling me that you're a little bit uh, partial to the area, of course, being mm -hmm. site superintendent here. So if I'm somebody who's never been to Fox Ridge before, where is like the first place or the best place that you would say you have to see that before you leave? So one of my favorite areas is Eagle's Nest. It's the 144 steps up to the platform. Um, like say here in a few weeks when the leaves are turning, it's very beautiful. Uh, you get an overview of the Ambrol River. Uh, and then I really like canoeing here. Uh, I'm a little partial to that too. Yeah. So before I wrap up, is there anything else about Fox Ridge or maybe this side of the park that we didn't talk about that's worth mentioning? Um, 
it's just it's a very neat area to come to. Uh, we like I say we do have the in, endangered Indiana brown bats that roost here. Uh, very proud of that. Uh, I know Grand Prairie Friends are promoting uh, bat habitat up on their area, and, and their ground actually joins ours. Um, and there's hope in the future that this trail that we're on right now will someday connect all the way to the city of Charleston. So that that is the the hope and this would be like the final leg. Uh, we connect from the township road um, down into the park. So if, if we can get access from Charleston into those township roads, they'll be able to ride their bike all the way to here or hike. Definitely crossing our fingers for that. I know that Charleston is, you know, kind of trying to come a bit of a become a bicycle recreation area, I guess, um, especially with like the tour to Charleston and, you know, mm -hmm. a race, that kind of thing. And they've really done a lot of work on the trails out at Lake Charleston and also through Warbler Ridge. And hopefully we'll get to bring that full circle because season yes. one, we started at Lake Charleston. They mentioned this project. Then season two, we got to talk to Warbler Ridge. They mentioned this project. So now here we are in season three, you know, slowly making those Slows. connections. Everything moves slow, but it's, but it is moving forward. So we'll shake our crystal ball. We don't know what the, the future of Take a Hike holds, but I'm hoping that we get a finale for that. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you so much, Dwayne. You've been a wealth of knowledge and uh, thanks for showing us around Fox Ridge today. Thank you. Of course. And we want to thank our viewers for joining us for this episode of Take a Hike. And we hope to see you next time. Take a Hike on WEIU is supported by Roll King, America's farm and home store, camping supplies, kayaks, fishing and pet supplies, and more. Find your store and more information regarding Roll King at RollKing.com.